Welcome everyone to another live digital Kava stream here with the Polynesian Eyes podcast. I don't know about you guys, but it's been a long week. Uh, <laughs> glad it's Friday. It's Saturday in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we're excited to have Lolo from Kava University here with us today. Uh, Lolo, how's it going? How's the Zion these days? <laughs> It's good, man. It's, it's uh, you know, this town's only got 6,000 people, so not too much can happen. Um, if anything happens, it's really just amongst us. But <laughs> <laughs> other than that, yeah, it's a uh, daily grind, man. So, mm. so far, so good. Nah, awesome, man. Appreciate having you here. Appreciate your time. Mr. Atearoa, what's, uh, what's up in your neck of the woods? Ooh, it's nice. Um, I'm the only one at home at the moment. Wife is currently in Tonga. Oh, some yeah. family stuff. So she's enjoying it in Tonga. So it's good to be in the kingdom. So she's there. And then um, I'm here. Just spent some time with the in-laws. Did some dishes. Um, you know, tried my best to do whatever clean I can do. Uh, don't, don't lie. Don't lie. She's not going to know she's in Tonga. She's not going to know whether you did the dishes or not, Masi. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just pretty chill. Watch some uh, little football. <laughs> Watching the Oregon and uh, Michigan State game. Uh, <clears throat> just here and there. Rain, little rainy, but it's getting warmer here in New Zealand. Nice. So, looking forward to the warmer weather here. But, How cold uh, does it get out there? It can get pretty cold. Um, not snow, like sticking, but it can get pretty cold. Uh, so were, you, were you here when it's during some of the cold months? Oh, dude, yeah. It's it's cold, and the one thing that caught me off guard in New Zealand is there's not a lot of indoor heating. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, there's not a lot of indoor heating, so... I, I was going to Tonga, so I didn't have a lot of, like, sweaters oh, and oh, stuff. Yeah. But I was like, oh, it shouldn't be too bad because as long as I'm in the car or in the house, I should yeah. be good. But then the car was warm, but then I get into the house, and then I understood why a lot of our cousins in the pictures, even indoors, they have sweaters and stuff. Full on jackets. Yeah. And all. <laughs> so I, I, learned, I learned my lesson the hard way. Let me put yeah. it that way. That yeah. cool, yeah, it can get pretty cold. Um, apparently, back in the days, they just recently changed it. But back in the days, you can build homes. I don't, maybe it can. Maybe it is today, but it's not mandatory. You know, insulation. You know how you put insulation mm -hmm. through the walls. Right. A lot of New Zealand homes don't have that. And that's no why insulation? the homes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that's why the the cold air can seep in through penetrates that. in. Yeah. Yeah. So cold. if you build a newer home, yes, the newer homes are a little bit warmer and stuff, but. Most homes in New Zealand, don't, there's no central heating system. So people, it's either you get a heater, you know, those kind of AC stuff you can put on the side of the Split wall. Unit, like a put, single unit. You, know, you can put that in and stuff, but there's no, there's no central heating, heating to kind of heat the whole house here in New Zealand. Anywhere? So, no. No. So we have, like for us, we have like this gas thing that kind of shoots out heat when it does get cold. And it's just for the living room. Is it not legal but, or something or what? <laughs> It's, Energy they, is not as, as plentiful. I, I'll tell you this, yeah. man. Lolo, I went to Europe. I went to France. I went to like Germany in the summer. There's there's not as much AC as they're here as it is here in the US. Like, yeah, I was I was like, I was like, I might as well be in New Zealand. Like, <laughs> I, it, it really it really is uh, it really is interesting. She. Guys are having too much fun in the hmm. in the comments here. So I'll bring it up here real quick. Uh, first one is everyone's excited to see Lolo. Welcome. Yep, hmm. we're excited. We appreciate Lolo's time uh, yeah. here. She Masi, these look at these guys. She she gave her a comment going me. Hey guys. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't even got through the first cup yet, and everybody's already dropping bombs already. Come on. <laughs> hey, Slick Rick, Malo today. Welcome. Welcome to the Kava session. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, same thing here with Mata'afa. Mata'afa here is not holding any punches. So interesting. Interesting. Everybody's getting in a good mood. I think I know what video we're going to watch first because everybody's mood here. Hmm. Tui, welcome. Welcome, Malo. Welcome. welcome. Malo too. So, 
I have this funny video um, for everyone here. What we got today is we're going to do a bunch of like reactions, just kind of interesting things. We are going to, you know, the overlying theme is we're going to have some conversations on the political discussion here in the U.S., Uncle Donald. You know, I don't know if I want to say anti Kamala. We're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna say I like Masi's one Kumala or one of the one of the comments. You know, we're just gonna call her Kumala moving forward. Um, but um, hey, looks like uh, Slick Rick wants to say what's up um, from EPA. Maria, Maria, welcome, welcome. The bill. Yes. So we'll start with our first one. And uh, hey, guys, today is a good day to have comments, questions. Um, we're going to kind of have a little bit of fun here. But uh, here's, the, here's the first video we're going to watch. It's pretty hilarious. It's between an Indian guy and an Egyptian guy. And we all have those, you know, when you go to a Kalapu or you're hanging out, you always have the guy that no matter what story he's told, he's got to be a one-upper. You know what I mean? You could make up something and this guy will, he, they can't help themselves. Right, wow. they're always gonna be like, "Oh yeah," or oh, or don't worry, and they try to come up. So, this is a Egyptian and a Indian one upper. So uh, let's let's take a listen here. Oh, in India we have potholes. If you enter into one, you straight away go to multiverse. You know, <laughs> multiverse got invented because of Indian potholes. I don't know what butthole is, but uh, anyway, traffic light. We have just uh, red go, green go, yellow go. <laughs> Habibi, in Egypt, the car in the roundabout stop for the car outside. It makes no sense. In India, we don't have roundabouts. Do you know in Egypt, you can't even have a new car. Huh? After you take from the showroom, two seconds, it becomes 16 years old. <laughs> in India, we have unlimited lanes. If there is no lane, we create a lane. <laughs> In Egypt, you don't even wear seat belts. You can buy t-shirts with the fake one just to avoid. In Indian roads are like playing video games with no rules. And do you know who is the boss? The ah. Elon Musk said, if you want to drive on Mars, you need to have a driving license from India. You know why? Because there are so many potholes in India. And Mars is like that. <laughs> Mars also has buttholes? <laughs> Pothole. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we, we all have a guy like that. It doesn't matter what the story is. Always a one upper, always got got one thing else to say. But I will say this. In third world countries, if there's only one lane, there's actually three rows of cars driving in there. And that's that's like that's what you would expect, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what blew my mind in France? France is like that. Mm. And I was like, what in the world? Like, are we in like the Dominican Republic? Like, that's where I see this kind of stuff. And then I found out later, listening to another video, 45% of Paris's population are Foreigners. immigrants. Mm. Right? So okay. now, now we start to understand that kind of behavior and what's going on. We're starting to see that starting to affect here in the U.S., right? There's there's a lot of behaviors that we wouldn't typically see as normal, like the Venezuelan gang taking over an apartment complex yeah, in that's crazy. Colorado, in Aurora. So, you know, kind of interesting. But, yeah, any thoughts on the video or immigration? Just kind of any general thoughts while I, mm -hmm. you know, queue up our next one. How about you, Lolo? What's your thoughts? Yeah, that, yeah, that's uh, as far as immigration is concerned. That's uh, trying to get the people who are coming in to learn. Mm. You know, we all there's four mm. lanes. Mm. Right, assimilate. There's only four cars, right? <laughs> and to go in and take in uh, 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 an apartment complex, take over and take over their they 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 punk mm. the owner and they're picking up. They're taking rent. Yeah, from the people. <laughs> Yeah, that's like some straight 1920s mobster gangster stuff right there. You know, that's long gone, right? It's supposed to be. Wow, wow, West. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they show up and they do that. Like, you wouldn't hear of that anywhere, right? Where somebody just mm -hmm. goes and takes over um, straight up with the guns going to every room and everything. And they tried that in Chicago and it didn't work because they, Chicago guys, they don't mess around, right? And New York and whatnot, whatnot, but 
but yeah, that's important. And that's why they were bringing them in slowly, you know, just to make sure yeah. that we make sure that, first of all, you're not criminals in your country and you can come and assimilate, you know, this is how we run things here. This is how you behave. You're right, mm. right, right. So, yeah. <laughs> now, definitely how immigration. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, I was going to say that the immigration is definitely what the top two issue economy and immigration. Right. So, um, nah, Im immigration is a big deal. I'm all for, for, you know, you know, Donald, we always have a lot of people come who take that risk and I, I, hey, I'm always for the risk and I'm not going to just let them do their, their thing. But to me, if you get caught, you face the penalty and go yeah. back. That, yeah. That's my, that's my, um, that's just my perspective, and I don't mind immigrants doing the same thing. But at the same time, if you get caught and that's the law, and you get deported, don't don't make other people feel sorry for yourself. You can't you, blame you, someone else. Yes, right. yes, that's your that's your fault. You took the risk, and um, at the same time, we all know as um, each country, you when you get people like that coming in, and you especially when you're unvetted, it's not it's not safe, and it's a burden on the, everyone's. Uh, taxpayer uh money when we can use that on other things so that's just my uh perspective on that and that's why uh the immigration issue i think i think you've seen in europe too um how it's getting pretty mm -hmm. pretty bad it's a little it's starting to it's like a very thin line between chaos and and civility kind of happening especially over there in europe because there's a mass migration from africa and uh, a lot of the middle east and stuff but we just need to be careful and like be sensible, like what Lolo said, like do it at times at time, you know, time and time again, because we gotta, we can only pay for so much for people to come in. We have our own needs with infrastructure and to, to create uh, better schools and then the healthcare. But um, but yeah, that's just my thoughts there. No, and a hundred percent. And and one of the things that really is concerning to me is FEMA now saying they don't have enough money. To take mm. care of the people in the flooding from the what is it, uh, Hurricane Helene yeah. or whatever. Right, and you know right. what the reason was? Yeah, 750, 750 bucks. bucks. And they say they don't have enough money, FEMA, because they spent 650 million with the illegal immigration right. that came through and yeah. facilitating that. So yeah. we believe in a house of order, right? Mm. You can say that's a good thing. It would be no different than if someone is donating all their his food to the neighbor, but his kids in his house are starving and dying. Like yeah. that, that just because you say, Oh, I'm doing something. Like, no, there's an order. There's a sequence. There's an order to do things. Um, I, I don't disagree too much with uh Mata'ava here. I I couldn't wait to come back to the US, to be honest. Right? I was like, there's a reason why America's number one. Um but yeah, it's it's just really concerning um it's when you look at circle. some of those things. It's a vicious circle, right? Throughout history. Um, because you know the saying uh hard times makes uh mm. hard times make uh, strong men, strong yeah. men make easy times, easy times make weak men, and then right the 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 the, the, the cycle circle, yeah, yeah. the cycle repeats itself. And it seems like easy times to me, right? Because yep. uh, if if it happened in every right generation or every uh, uh, um, part of the the world, right? Because then you think, remember the movie uh, Three Hundred? Those were Spartans. You, mm. I, you don't think you don't hear of them being that strong right now or anymore? Or the <laughs> Romans, right? The Roman Empire, right? You don't hear of them being that strong, or you know, where 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 is that? What happened to them? You know what I mean, and I don't don't know, you know. The, the exact things that happened, or Alexander, you know, there was somebody in France, or uh, Napoleon, right? Mm, Guys yeah. Like that. But their empire is gone, and now it seems like the world is just easy times. Um, We've had a lot of pos prosperity and a lot of peace for a little too long, right? And that uh, that goes in with uh, with things that happen in the scriptures, what the scriptures as well. You know, once they start prospering and making a lot of money and having things and they start acting up mm. and then it, the cycle just goes over. Repeats again, it. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Mata mm. has an interesting point here. We also uh, are an empire in decline. Watch the diaspora start to flood. 
I've already seen a little bit of this, right? Especially with the older, the older generation. The 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 goal now is to re go back to Tonga and retire, right? Because the cost of living here, the dangers here, and you know, a lot of people are getting a little bit more motivated to go to to Tonga. Honestly, that would be one thing I would love to do for my kids. Um, they don't have their Tongan citizenship here, but when I take them to Tonga next, that's on the docket, right? We're going to go straight to the record keeping, um, the immigration or whatever it is, get their Tongan uh, birth certificate, get their Tongan passports. So if for whatever reason they say, I want to go to Tonga and live there, they have yeah. that option as a Tongan citizen and get that dual citizenship. So that's that's relatively high um on, on my priority list. Any thoughts on uh, Mata'afa's comment? Um, no. I think uh, Maka said the same thing, Tua. He's noticed a uh, man of Tongans also returning back to Tonga. I've known a few, too. I've only known, like, people when they get to that retirement age, but I'm actually finding out quite a few high-profile, like, Tongan construction uh, bosses that have actually gone back. Um, gone back to, to Tonga just to just to they want to just go back so um i think i think there is uh people are sensing the times and western uh i think western civilization and countries they're in this middle of this fight with this cultural war and things are not mm -hmm. going um uh as well as just uh with their education and what made the western civilization uh prosperous it's kind of yeah. on the decline space especially with just basic knowledge um, so, you know, things people, people, a lot of their kids are getting shoved in the, in their throats with things that parents don't want. And parents are actually losing some parental rights too, uh, for kids. So, um, yeah, I'm not surprised uh, Mata'afa, um, because Maka and uh, quite a few people that I know too have actually made the move back, back to, to Tonga, the, back to the islands. Tonga. Yeah. So yeah, no, good thought. Yeah. Sorry, I was at a Faikawa and so. <laughs> no, no worries. Did you have any thoughts, Lolo, on uh, Madafa's uh, question here? If you know any trend or not really or anything about going back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see any 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 observations from your end? Looks like Renegade here is saying, yeah, he's seen his dad going back. He seems to be shocked by it, but. When things I, I, when things go bad, man, everybody starts looking at other options. Yeah, I hear you know the older folks, the older generation going back, but they've always had that plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think the new generation, it's like they could, but now most most of them are here, so they they have no choice but to stay, or they don't have no choice, but it wouldn't make sense for them to go back. You know, mm -hmm. just to run away from something like uh you know whatever's going on today so hmm. you gotta hey hey jesse appreciate the, the comment here so her comment is a lot of uh prosperity and peace for a little too long is exactly that looks like her husband uh, matt geiger was telling me the other night and that's the thing right we all want to be successful we all want to have an easy life but easy life tends to lead to poor decisions sometimes <laughs> so <laughs> Yes. Well, I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, it, it's fine having peace, but because in the scriptures, it's also mentioned when uh, when cities were prosperous, but mm -hmm. also they were just still maintaining the relationship with God. Right. What did God do? Uplifts right. and took the whole city. It's it's when you were it's when you're prosperous, and then you think that man has all the answer, and you can kind of be a little bit more risky. And then you right. say, I don't think I need somebody. To right. me, that's the that's that's the yeah. issue. But then then you start creating laws like uh uh men can uh men can become women whenever they feel like it. <laughs> and then you start having laws. Right. Oh, it's okay. Funky, weird, a, weird laws, it, right? It's okay to have a law if uh uh boy can marry boy and girl marry, you know, all these yeah. kind of things. So it all starts it all starts from somewhere. So having money and doing well and having wealth is fine it's there's other social issues especially when you know because people human behavior functions better when you know there's somebody superior than you or has that you are creator you somebody created you when you don't when you lose that knowledge 
there's no purpose and you tend to do what men think are able to do, which is uh, not very good things. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Well, then, yeah, go ahead. The, go ahead, Lolo. Oh, you see the, the upper class, right? You know the scripture that says we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual yeah, Paul. high places, right? Yeah. And the highest places now is government. It seems like celebrity status is a high place. You know, the high places are being perverted or they're acting perverted now, right? The whole they're they're rich, they have money, and now they they do whatever they want as far as the perversions just go run wild. Out of control. Right? And then the decline starts, right? Because mm. they're the ones that make the rules, they're the ones that make the laws, they're the ones that make these things acceptable. You know, mm-hmm. and little by little, um, it just starts killing itself out uh, off or eating itself from the inside. So, yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. So, I decided to pull this video up. Um, let me see here. This is an interesting one because you know, there's a lot of people. It's like, oh, we have to take them in. That's how we get them out of poverty. I don't know if you guys have seen this video. Yeah. But this guy does a fantastic, fantastic demonstration of why that is a flawed idea. Right. And one of the things that we really promote here on, on the podcast is you should be happy that you're bad. This is why it's important to have conversations, right, right. and discuss right. ideas. You want your bad ideas to die. You don't want to act and follow bad ideas, right? You want to have a bad idea and you want to have good friends and good family to be like, Tua, that's stupid. Don't do it, right? And then you stay, oh, yeah, you know what? That's a bad idea. Then you thinking it's a good idea and you act on it for impulse and then you get the negative the negative uh, outcomes for for that bad idea. Oh, yeah, with the PR men. Uh, of the, the group Malo Malo, she Viney doves in the house Malo. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and watch this video real quick, and then just kind of have a reaction. Some people say that mass immigration into the United States can help reduce world poverty. Is that true? Well, no, it's not. <laughs> and let me show you why. This gumball represents the one million legal immigrants that the United States has taken every year on average since 1990. Now, who in the world deserves our humanitarian compassion? The World Bank has one measure of the desperately poor of the world. They make less than $2 a day. And how many people make less than $2 a day in the world? We'll start with Africa. In Africa alone, there are 650 million people who make less than $2 a day, 650 million. And in India, another 890 million people, desperately poor. China adds another 480 million people making less than $2 a day. And unfortunately, the rest of Asia has a heartbreaking 810 million people who the World Bank says make less than $2 a day. And finally, there's 105 million of Latin America's population that are desperately poor. All told, the World Bank says there are 3 billion people in the world, 3 billion people who are desperately poor, making less than $2 a day. That's 3,000 gumballs. And every year, we take a million and suggest that we've somehow made a humanitarian difference. Of course, We don't pull our immigrants from these desperately poor populations, do we? These people are too poor, too sick, too disconnected to make it here as immigrants. We tend to pull our immigrants out of the better off poor of the world. And Mexico tends to define the type of immigrant that we bring here because the plurality of people come from Mexico. And Mexico is poor. How many people in the world live in countries that have average incomes lower than that of Mexico. And the World Bank tells us that that number is these 3 billion plus another 2.6 billion people. 5.6 billion people in the world who live in countries with average incomes below that of Mexico. 
That's 5,600 gumballs. And so what is it that the elites are telling us? They're telling us that when we take this 1 million immigrants, that we somehow or another are tackling world poverty. And we have to do it regardless of the effect on our unemployed, the working poor, the most vulnerable members of our society, regardless of the effect on our natural resources. Even if we went by the most radical proposals in Washington, which are to actually double our immigration to 2 million a year, which would totally overwhelm our physical, natural, and social infrastructures, we couldn't make a noticeable difference. And we may be really hurting the impoverished people of the world because the million that we do take are among the most energetic, often the better educated, certainly the most dissatisfied people that if they did not immigrate would be the agents for change to improve the lot of all the people in these countries. The true heroes in the global humanitarian field are the people in these countries who have the wherewithal to immigrate to another country, but instead stay in their countries to apply their skills to help their fellow countrymen. Unfortunately, our immigration system tends to entice these very type of people to abandon their countrymen. The impossibility of making even a dent is actually worse than it looks here because last year when we took 1 million immigrants, this is crazy. These countries added <laughs> births over deaths, 80 million more people into the impoverished population. And this year, Congress is bringing in a million legal immigrants. And this year, according to the United Nations, these countries are expected to add another 80 million people. And next year, you could be quite sure that Congress, unless stopped by the American voters, will bring in another million immigrants. And these countries, unfortunately, will be adding another 80 million people into these impoverished nations. We could take 5 million a year, but we'd never get ahead of what's happening in these countries, not in this century. Don't you see? Immigration can never be an effective or significant way to deal with the suffering people of the world. They have to be helped where they live. 99.9% .9 of them will never be able to immigrate to a rich country. There's no hope for that. They have to bloom where they're planted. The only place that 99.9% .9 of these people can be helped is where they live. Let's help them there. Very interesting. Any thoughts? Mm. Any comments? No, no. What's your thoughts? Um, the 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 whole looking um, charitable, right? So you're you're gonna look good, <laughs> right? We're gonna we're all gonna look good. We're gonna feel good about ourselves if we bring in a million people, right? And whatever year this is, he said definitely. He definitely has no idea what's happening now, right? Like he has no right. concept. From let's say that was the late nineties to early two thousands. Yeah, because he said three billion, and I think it's six or seven billion or two closer to that now. Um, but if only three million can overwhelm the entire thing, right? We already see that, right? FEMA couldn't help; they ran out of money because of the the, the money that was used that was saved for FEMA. Right? Any all the emergencies was used to bring in or at least house and feed all these you know, 10 to 20 million people that, that just came in, which means they're already um, overwhelmed. Yeah, as far as our, our our country is concerned. So, so many people are complaining about it, and it, you know, rightfully so. Mm. You know, just for them to look good or for them to look good so that they get votes. And so, you know, when it comes down to it, follow the money and follow the power. It seems yeah. like that's just a money move or a power move, right? So... Mm. No, interesting. Uh, that's a good illustration of what, what what's really going on to really help uh, nations is you've got to help them within their own country. And we can take uh, we it's good to get to it's good to get immigrants because I mean if you think about the U.S. U.S. is a country of immigrants. I think of New Zealand here. It 
every every year it's becoming a country of of uh immigrants too um here but um i was just thinking that it's we just have you just have to be smart because not only like not only with the, the if you get a mass amount of people who are unvetted and don't assimilate um you also you also affect the working class because if you're if you're a ceo at a company and let's say you run a manufacturing company or uh, a company of, of putting uh, uh, equipments together and you pay your you know worker 22 dollars an hour if you get an illegal immigrant and then he's you know he just you can that can you, they can actually secure uh, social security right so they get a temporary social security they come in and they're real willing to work for like 11 bucks eight bucks cheaper and you train them that's gonna affect the people the the, the citizen the, the middle class person that's been working for that job at a lower rate so th this 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 has a trickle effect in all facets of uh of um of an american or whatever country you're you're, you're from if you don't be careful with immigration because we would like to help everybody but you know it's gonna it, you can't help everybody because fine you don't have the money all, all of us what we can do if there's an opportunity to help you always help that's what that's what christian and good people try to do but um as a country you always want to make sure in order to help somebody else you got to make sure you can help yourself before you help help uh someone so um that's kind of my thoughts there and i also think of um you know the hurricane it, it kind of took my thoughts to the people of um lahaina that yep. lost their homes what did they get thing. like maybe a thousand bucks no maybe 700 bucks 700 bucks no and and that and that's that makes sense and then they 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 just recently announced a, a 50, another 15 billion dollars going to ukraine to help with the the war effort there you know so it's it's just and then not only that then the the illegal immigrants with paying their accommodation their flights wherever they want to go you know they're it's in the <clears> thousands <throat> and they're being taken care of see that's not right it's almost like just put it here's a here's a tongue in concept it's almost like with your kainga and family you're helping somebody from if you're a hahake you go help somebody from hihifo and you give them the what they need to help with their fatongia and kavenga and you can't help your own family with their own uh, kavenga and their responsibility it's kind of like that same concept you yeah gotta, it just doesn't make sense right doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense so just to help with some of our talking viewers why that thing is not right and just apply it with the in a scale of you know like the u.s where it's going through the immigration but that's my thoughts there yeah, hundred percent. Hey, Dwayne, Malo, Malo, welcome, welcome. So he says to me, it's the principle of give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. See, and 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 it's even worse than that, in my opinion. There's not even a fish to be given, mm. right? It's like it's overwhelming. It's it's actually like it's destructive. Um, what what comes to my mind? When I'm when I'm listening to this, because our world has become unrecognizable, right? Like I used to be able to be like, oh, they're just doing it. They're just it's just a misunderstanding of how they view the world, right? They just don't understand. They're they're quote unquote trying to be nice and trying to be helpful. But I no longer I, I can't accept that anymore because the the what's being said and what's being done. When you're making an honest mistake, you correct yourself when you feel like, oh, I make a mistake. I am like, no, they're doing this on purpose. There's a reason why they're doing. And I now go by this saying, the outcome is the reason for what they're doing. Like, for example, they want to overrun the system, right? Mm. They want the American people to suffer. They want the chaos. This is no longer of, oh, they're just stupid politicians. They don't know what what, what is damaging the country. Mm. Like, no, 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 no. We're well beyond that point. They mm. know what they're doing, and it's on purpose. And you don't have to ask yourself, why are they doing this? No, just look at the outcome. Look at the outcome and the impact, and that'll tell you why they're doing it, because that's what they want. Mm. So this is why I'm getting more and more into the thinking. We can no longer really blame the politicians anymore. We will get what we deserve because they're doing it right in front of your face. 
and they're 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 saying, "Oh, we're just trying to be helpful." It's like, no, 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 no. You know what they're doing, and if you're voting for it, you also want that, mm. right? And that that's where I'm heading towards right now, in my personal opinion, because it is getting very difficult for me personally to give benefit of the doubt anymore. I think the lines have become relatively clear now clear. on which side of the fence you're on. I don't know. That's kind of my my thoughts right now on the immigration. This is on purpose. It's intended. It's intended. You know, we look at, oh, they didn't have any money. The whole point is to not have any money for the American people, right? That's why they did it. That's why they mm. spent that money. I don't know. Any thoughts on that? It's so, um, that, that's, yeah, that's for you to, so say it is for the, the getting in, uh, illegal immigrants in here and allowing them to vote, which in some cities they've already started to allow them to vote in, you know, local government and they're, that's the plan, right? Mm -hmm. say that's the plan. And they're almost halfway to replacing the black, uh, vote, right? So they're going to keep on allowing this to happen. Um, the 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 thirst for power mm. for you to want to you're willing to destroy your own country just mm. so that you can have the power if that's the case mm. the vote right um that, that that just blows my mind how anybody could think or want that right the greatest country in the world the greatest you know military greatest economy and all that and you're willing to sacrifice that just so that you can vote yourself in you that know, power. to have power, right? And it's obvious that the influences to to other countries and selling influences to other countries and them getting together um, at the that top um, is, is, is blows my mind because how can you, right? Yeah. How can you do this just so that you can get power? And it's blinding and it seems extremely intoxicating to where the point where they don't care. Yeah. They do not care. That's where they are right now. Matter. Yeah. They they can do it right in before they used to be like, oh fuck am I, it's embarrassing. Let's let's now they're like, who cares? Yeah. They're they, they they've gotten so comfortable with the idea, or in your words, intoxicated with the power. Right. It doesn't matter anymore. As long as I get what you want, what I want. And you know what's funny? When you were saying that, uh, Lolo, where have we seen this before? Well, there's a reason why the Lord said the Book of Mormon was written for our days, because this is exactly, right. this is exactly what the Nephites right. did to themselves. Right. This is exactly what they did. This is why Captain Moroni came with the, you know, standard of liberty and said, Siana, you're either going to line up with me and fight, or I'm just going to chop you down myself. Right. right, because right. at some point lines have to be drawn. At some point, now I'm not advocating for that, but there has to be a point where we say you're you're voting for this, therefore you are in favor of that. You right. cannot say, "Oh, I think they're just confused." No, you <laughs> are seeing what their actions are and what the outcome is, and you're saying, "I'm giving them my vote," so you're saying that that's okay. Um, right. but just it's, we're living in very crazy times. What did the Lord also say? What's the whole point of a secret combination power right. and money? That's all <laughs> it comes down to. And yeah. how these guys are behaving. They don't care about America. They don't care about the American citizen. And this is also true in Europe, right? Europe will sacrifice their people. The leaders right. in Europe, they only care about one thing, power. And money. That's the, the, the decision. That's why that saying is follow the money because that'll follow where you goes and what usually money represents power. Hmm. So any other kind of comments before we go to the next video? Ah, it's pretty, pretty clear. Pretty good. Well, the crazy thing about this is there are people that I thought were intelligent enough to recognize it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, the, the scriptures tell you that even the elect are going to be deceived at some point. You know, they're good people because they're good, good people. <laughs> but it's crazy that they're with that stuck on the emotional, uh, you know, mm. attachment without, mm. you know, standing back and thinking just a little bit. You know, yeah. Like, let's think, let's think about like, look at this and look where it's been, look where it is and look where it's going. Like, let's do that. But 
they're so emotionally attached to the way things sound. And that's kind of why the, the, the same way I think I, I see Hawaii as far as them being like 98% Democrat, right? They complain mm. about everything that's going on in everything. Hawaii. Everything. But they don't realize that these people sound like you guys, <laughs> but the record shows that they're not exactly. doing what you guys want to, mm. want yeah. to do. So, yeah, good all point. the aloha and everything, right? They all know the language. <laughs> so. when, 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 when you're a bunch of sheep hanging out and you notice every time one sheep goes with that other sheep, one goes missing, and it's always the other one and not this one, you should probably at some point say, let's check this guy. I don't think he's a sheep. I think this guy's a wolf. Yeah. Right. <laughs> every time he walks off with someone, he comes back and he goes, oh, the wolves ate pita. Oh, Shione, let's go for a walk. He come back. Oh, the wolves ate Shione. And he was like, uh, Shiana, at some point, we all have to say, right. I think this guy's he, he's saying he's a sheep. He's buying like a sheep. He's pretending like he's eating the grass. But like the Lord said, by you, he didn't say by the hairstyle or the color of their skin or the sound of their voice, by the fruits. And the fruits say, if you go with this guy, Wolves are going to eat you. So in other words, he's a wolf. He may <laughs> even be, he may even be actually a sheep, right? But he has a wolf heart and a wolf mind because he's leading others to the wolves. Yeah. So even if he doesn't, they don't have to be quote unquote, be actual wolves, but the way they behave is, is that way. Um, anyways, here's the next one. Here's the next video. This one, I think everybody's going to enjoy. It definitely reminds, I don't know if you guys seen this yeah. video, but it is doing the rounds on social media. It cracks me up because I've seen this literally in this prime example, but also in other ways how people behave. And this is similar to what we're talking about, right? Right, right, right. You say something, you say you believe in one thing, but when we sit back and we pay attention to your actions, no. the actions and the, and the words aren't matching, but this is this is a good one. Let's 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 watch uh Kulisi here and uh and react, but this is pretty hilarious. Kangaloto moi kau faga afe mau tali tali leleki motolo como lava mai ki eta hula hula e fia fini mau fia fia lahi ge si oato ki monga i fofonga malo au bito como lava mai ki mo ape a toki hokuato. Ko kole ke mo sio takai ke mo vakai oku oku yaha ne i hani oku kai ke mo tui sote hina kataki fakamole mole ka koeni mau loto ke tau hi ke molu malu mo fakalau mali e tau malai peke poloni ke mo tolu oku mo tui ha sote oku lan kehe kole atu fakamole mole ka mo huki tua ke mo lava sio mai me tua ki he holo holo. Kinangalo e tau eiki ke tau sote hina. Sai, tau hoku atu lewa, ke tau whakawhie fia, whakalau maalie, kole eni ki he DJ ke to e tā mai fui whasi, ke tau whie fia. Mahalo. DJ? I wanna have sex on the beach. Come on, move your body. Sex on the beach. I wanna have sex on the beach. Oh, boy. <laughs> that is so true not just for yeah. dances because i have literally seen that scenario in tongue and dances but the whole situation right this is the same with our politics i feel like our politics and even <laughs> our behavior across the board right whether it's in family politics social things like that to me is a description of how I feel the world is right now. But any thoughts, Masi, and then we'll go to uh, Lolo here. <laughs> Just a quick question, and maybe both of your experience is this only has this happened in other churches, or is it only LDS churches that they've done it before? I've only time? seen this in LDS churches, yeah, in my yeah, opinion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. don't see a lot of other churches do a lot of dances, yeah. though. For the youth. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For like an activity. Usually yeah. when it's a dance, it's other things. <laughs> It's other things, yeah. No, it's uh, no, to yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I think. That's a 
though those are the things that definitely uh i guess you know since we're talking about the tongue and lbs that they can definitely in, uh improve to me it's see they have these certain standards that they feel like it's self-righteous but it's not accomplishing the goal to invite others like having a shirt doesn't mean if they're you know if, if they're gonna think to me as long as they come in and they're enjoying mingling that that that's good but there's we all know there's some people with with uh positions with uh in the church that they have the certain standards and all of this is they don't have white shirts and a tie you know they don't they, they can't participate in certain activities but yeah i mean that is just funny. And maybe that's the reason why maybe some uh, some people in Tonga just say, I ain't going to join the LDS church. <laughs> There's no way. No way Jose is with me when they see stuff like that. But, yeah, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> hey, yeah, way. Any yeah. thoughts, Lolo? I, I thought the, the weirdest thing um, after growing up like that was when I went to a Palangi function, and it was nothing like that. It was jeans. It was. You know, T-shirts. It was, you know, whatever. And I thought, why? Why are these? You know, Falang is not wearing. You know, because they're like, sinners. They're sinners. <laughs> and that's what you would think, right? If you were to judge it that way. <laughs> but then you realize, man, are we being too serious about this? Because you know, the state president is here and everything. But at the same time, right? Ironically, they're playing this this song, right? They're trying to keep it holy or whatever they're trying to do with the white shirts but they play this song and i've seen that that is so well, was so common growing up um because we our generation once we grew up and knew what word what the words were we we're like dang they're playing this song that's crazy and i see a lot of songs there's a lot of songs there's a lot of them and you yeah. know you know there's a lot of them right so that's hilarious yeah <laughs> no and i think i think that is because the reality is, as human beings, right, we are full of contradictions. We are full of contradictions, right? Just our behavior. Like, we like to think that we're, quote, unquote, logical, and we always behave. We're, we're full of contradictions, but our whole point in life is try to, as we go through the journey of learning, spiritual, temporal, knowledge is to try and resolve those contradictions and there's just some that it's just like man i thought i had problems but then i see stuff like this i'm like oh i guess hopefully i'm not that bad because that's i mean what's obvious to one is not obvious to another but i don't know i thought i thought he did a great job in yeah. like capturing like the irony and just like you know what this is 100 percent accurate in my opinion Right. Hopefully we've improved since then, but is that that's must is it still a thing today? Dude, I would not be surprised if this is still a thing today. I mean, <laughs> I, I see it in other parts of the church in certain behavior, mm -hmm. right? In in the church till to, to this day, and it'll probably never go away. That's what I'm saying. We're just kind of full of contradictions sometimes. Um mm -hmm. But, I don't even think it's yeah. intentional. I don't think that that was. No, it, it's not always intentional. No, I think they had the right um, intentions, but I, I just I think it's a more of an education thing, you know. Like, all right, let's look at see how everybody's. Oh, they don't mind it as much. Oh, only you know, right? Because even in church, not all, not everybody wears. You know, when I went to Palangi stuff, not everybody wears a white shirt and tie. You know. Mm. Um, as far as the Palangi. So to me, I just compared it to them like, oh, well, they brought the church to us. And so I don't know why we're being over, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I get the loyalty to the righteousness and the loyalty to it. But like, let's just step back and, you know, relax real quick, guys. I mean, if they're not, you know, as hardcore about it, maybe we should just uh, you know, chill out a little bit. But I do understand the, the loyalty mm. part. So, mm. yeah, that's cool. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's uh the comments. I'm already falling behind, guys. I'm gonna skim through. Um <laughs> let's see here. What a bear's uh position is sex on the beach is a type of drink. <laughs> but even in that point, uh what a bears, well, what's yeah. the drink named after? 
<laughs> it's gonna. I mean, just because we added a thin layer in between. Oh, it's named after a drink. Well, well, what the drink is named after? And I'll tell you right now, when they hear those words, nobody is thinking about a drink. <laughs> unless, unless you're wearing a white shirt. If you're wearing a white shirt, apparently. <laughs> Your yeah. thoughts are protected. The Holy it's Ghost barrier, protects you. Deal. There's a barrier. The Holy, Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost only helps LDS people only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, way. Clyde Moore says that's why oh, fit why Clyde Moore. Eh? He doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the Seventh Day Adventists have figured out the solution. <laughs> Oh yeah, we welcome, welcome, uh, Tong and Style, Malo Pito Kautama, Shiotofa, shout out to Kava University from Bountiful, Utah. Maria Ofato, Malo, Malo. Malo. She look at the public relations guy, Mashi, for the Kalapu over here's response. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man, that is too much, man. That is too much. <laughs> That's nice. My it looks cool. like uh oh welcome, welcome, uh Moy. So from EPA, we got a couple people from EPA today. Seems like East Palo Alto mm. is uh very active. East Palo Alto mm. in the building. Yes, oh, Malo, oh, Malo, Malo. I I we watched uh some clips from uh, what was the name of that podcast, Masi, that we watched that had the two dudes and they were all like, Oh, these guys are like hi, but the two Polynesian guys, they were oh. pretty funny. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. But yeah, they were they were just talking about people not really saying hi to each other and you yeah, know, exactly. they come those guys. Other, and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like uh, well, Moy is not a. I was gonna say more. Looks like Moy is not a fan of your uh, Kansas City flag uh, behind you, eh, Lolo. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hey. I don't know. Before we get to Clyde Moore's comment here, I don't know, man. I think the the YouTube videos of the refs getting behind the Chiefs is starting to penetrate my thinking now. Lolo, is, am I just you know suffering from propaganda or what? But just pray about it. Go with the spirit, like we do. <laughs> just wear a white shirt when I'm watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're a white shirt, so you know what's going on. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, this is a fair point, uh, Clyde Moore. I it, it is true. Life mm. is that of a contraction, contradiction. But I, I, I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Are you saying contraction for real? So. Oh yeah, we. That's what I'm saying. But uh, oh yeah, we. She loto mama ka utama kaya sa iya ka utama in my philosophy. My philosophies are uh, causing issues in the in the around the Kumete, guys. Hey, Masi, guys are interested in your uh, beverage. They're saying it's a Palangi uh, Kava Bowl, or what is that? No, it's a uh, ginger beer from Hobbiton. Oh yeah, we. So but the Hobbits they, stop by the house every once in a while, or yeah, the Hob You know the Hobbits. They live. Was it Schmiegel or? Oh yeah. <laughs> you live down, down the, the road street, here huh? in New Zealand. I, I will drive. But it's just ah. uh, it's my it's my water bottle. But this is when I went to go check out the the Menehunes in um. Mene. Ngari mo ni lawa loro ko Menehunes ko may akehya. That's why Queen Charlotte changed the name of to New Tawa. She. Oh yeah. Bye. Hey, here, here here's another one. Now, granted, guys, I think everyone's pretty. It's pretty clear where we kind of stand on the uh, political arena, but facts are facts, right? Let's listen in on this. And uh, this is uh, Kumala, uh, anti Kumala's uh, first, uh, let's say, stepping stone in politics. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Brown from California. Oh, so yeah, let's it. let's let's see what his uh, thoughts are on and on Kumala here. Here is the real judge Joe Brown being interviewed. Listen up. Who is Kamala Harris? She's a fraud. <laughs> she is an image that's been carefully crafted. And you can start with what she is. She has a certain paint job, but that doesn't make her what she claims. 
and we have somebody that has a fabricated reality. I was just <laughs> mentioning it a minute or two ago. She talks about she was that child on the bus integrating uh, the schools. And if this was in California, I don't get it because at that point I was a school teacher in LA, <laughs> California, and we didn't have segregated schools. When she got into kindergarten first, I was a playground director with the city school system. We didn't have segregated schools in the entirety of California. Both of my parents were school teachers. What they did is they shuffled the teachers around, but right. you went to school in the neighborhood. So I don't know where that study came in. Uh, so smoking dope in the dorm rooms, listening to two files. She was 11 years old when she was in the dorm and he cut his first single of her niece. He was 21 and she was a prosecutor in Alameda County, California. So that was a story where show. we go with somebody that will tell those things? Yes. And she was a, that was a story that she was a show in the show. Uh, So when she, she goes to Howard, mm-hmm. she graduates, becomes a lawyer, and becomes a DA. I mean... He just goes over mm. and over and I mean, at some point, mm. what would even someone full of contradiction? How should they react to this? Like, any thoughts on that? <clears throat> My question is how, like with Joe Brown, like you'll have people bring up the past because they were there, or bring up the the offset in time and her years and Tupac's years and whatever, right? Like those people that were cheering behind her while she was walking. Do you think they even care about any of that stuff? Mm. And what is it that makes them so attached that they won't even stop to think, oh, this makes sense, that makes I mean, you see a lot of people leave, you know, and be like, oh, once they started, because every single one that starts investigating Donald Trump, investigating her and, you know, things that they say, then they realize, oh, we were lied to, we were blind, we were emotional. There's so many reasons why they actually leave. But... Look how many people aren't stopping to think. You know, there aren't they aren't stopping to recognize Joe Brown or or you know mm. um, anything. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. There's so <clears throat> many of them that don't care. So what is it? Well, see, and that's <clears throat> that's where I mentioned earlier. Like, I'm getting to the point where I can't rely on benefit of the doubt. I right. have to look at the outcome and say. That is by design. So people, people like you're describing who are just cheering and they're not, they're not going to look. They don't want to find out what they think that they're pretty sure if they were to look, they're going to see something that they don't want to see. So you know what they would prefer not to look. And I'll (laughs) give you a prime example. Israel is under slavery for 400 years right they're praying to god to rescue them to rescue them to rescue them god sends moses and then moses goes guys you guys want to see god you've been praying for god (laughs) so moses says come with me i'm gonna take you to god right Right. i'm on sinai and as they're climbing up to go to god All of Israel gets scared. And you know what they say? We're going to stay down here, Moses. You go up and talk to God. So it is by design that they don't want to know these things. Right? That's what I'm saying. There comes a point where you can give someone benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt. And when you get to the point where you're like, dude, you can clearly go take a look for yourself and you're not willing to go look, it's because you don't want to know the truth. You don't want to know, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. That's my opinion. I I, I could be wrong, but any any kind of thoughts out there? Any guys, what do you guys think? Um, I'm just thinking that quite a few people have already told themselves that they they don't like Trump, and it kind of comes along with your point, Dua, that they already don't like Trump, and they're just going to keep it that way. And they don't want to investigate or look for their own candidate, the other choice than Trump, who is who is very fake. When I think of Kamala, and this is just further evidence from the Brown uh, guy, because obviously he was critical on providing the stepping stones for her to get involved in politics, to get her in her name out there. 
and obviously becoming the uh, the uh, attorney general for mm -hmm. um, California. So um, we all know what she was doing in order to do that. Uh, you know, being with uh, the the brown guy, so he 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 knows the inside stories. So I just see Kamala when he says that she's fake. She's absolutely fake, just like the fake people. When they're you, you're around that 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 Hollywood, and their their looks are fake, their attitude is fake. That is Kamala yep. all over, and she's just doing it just to make it through. And and that's and if she wins, you know, hey, either we didn't do enough to have more election integrity because Trump already gave us many many times counsel and told us, hey, the 2020 was was funky. We all know it was funky. Nothing really happened, and it comes to 2024. And let's just say they able to pull it off. Oh well, we, we got to live through the the consequence. And then you know, it is what it is. And then that's probably like the whole cycle, like kind of like what Lola was talking about. Maybe it just things have to happen. And when we go through those cycles, the tough and maybe lives lost uh, is gonna happen. And that, that's that's what happens when you don't do anything to to have intervention. So. It's just one. It's just part of the the life. The, the sad thing is, is hopefully when it does happen that uh, let's just say you you still have a country, <laughs> still have a nation. That's the yeah. and that's the um, mm. that's the unpredictability mm. because we kind of talked about it too. When you have instability and chaos, it doesn't mean that you're gonna come back and have the same situation what you had before. It, it could mean you could fragment of certain parts of the country, and who knows, other things can happen. But it's it's um. It is uh, unpredictable the future when you have instability that happens, but love the stability that happens throughout many, you know, because America is still relatively young. Other empires that's lasted so long, um, you know, love the stability happens is because of intervention, little interventions here and there to kind of maintain it. So, so yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Twenty 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 four is literally a month or three weeks away. So. We don't have uh, long to find out. No, no. Any thoughts, any additional thoughts there, uh, Lolo? Um, we go to the next one, and it's related. This next video is a prime example of the ex the, the the issue that you're, you were sharing. But also, I want to get to Moe here. He, I think it's fair. He uh, has a different perspective than ours. But um, if you have a mm -hmm. comment there, uh, Lolo, if not, we'll jump to Moe here. Well, I, did, I was just thinking about um, the Marvel Universe, how... Um, Thanos was the bad guy. We were all for the, you know, the Avengers and all the, the, the Guardians of the Galaxy and all, right? Those are the good guys, right? And uh, Thanos, he was the bad guy because he wanted to get all the rings and then wipe out half of existence. But people, there are people that think that he had a good point. Like yeah, we're running out of resources, right? With with the which is a leftist, you know, ideology anyway, that we're using up too many too many resources. And yeah, it, he was right. There's some people who who thought like that, at the expense of everybody's freedom and liberties. At the expense mm -hmm. of that, we got to cut everything in half so that you know, because it sounds like it's a good idea to them, right? And mm -hmm. they think that it's a very noble uh, cause. And then you you rewind that all the way into the pre-existence, right? He convinced a third of the host of heaven that his idea was a good idea, and a third of them followed him. Mm -hmm. So there are people that think that it's a good idea. So with uh, the the left or the Democrat Party now and Kamala, I think they truly, honestly think from what it sounds like. That it's a good idea at the expense of everybody's freedoms and liberties, at the expense of safety and security, at the expense of the economy and uh, trades around the world and whatnot. So it's it's interesting to see that perhaps some of them leaked in from the pre-existence, <laughs> thinking mm -hmm. that you know those ideas, you know, even though it, it sacrifices a lot of the liberties and freedoms and agencies of people, that it's for a good cause, right? It's noble. Let's all put on masks and shut down businesses and churches and all that because it's a good idea. You know what I mean? See, like really. Yeah. My, my challenge with that, though, uh, Lolo, before we go to Moe's comment here, is <clears throat> they, they fail 
they failed the test of sincerity, in my opinion, to see if they really believe it's a good idea. If I really believe something's a good idea, like truly believe it, I apply it. Right. And, and a lot of these people, if you really believe that human beings are a cancer on society, right. Then you know what you should do? Remove the cancer that you have control over, which is yourself. Right. It's like, it's like when, when, um, shoot, what's the Indian guy? Not Vivek, the older one, Dinesh. He yeah. was, at, he was at like uh Middlebury, one of those really expensive, small private universities in the kind of like the East. And the, the student was up there <clears throat> and was like, Oh my gosh, we've oppressed the African Americans. We owe them reparations. They can't get education. And then Dinesh goes, you know what? If you really believe that, give up your, your attendance here and pay the tuition for another student of a minority. Right. right. Because if you really believe that, if you really believe that you by being, you have robbed someone else and you're, you're stealing an opportunity from someone else, I would still disagree with you. But if you at least sacrificed your position, mm. your money and your influence, I'd be like, I don't agree with you, but I can at least say what you said. You're sincere. Mm. It's it's still a crazy idea, but I right. can at least say you're sincere. Kamala Harris doesn't believe anything that she says, because right. if she did, she wouldn't be doing what she's doing. She wouldn't have voted for what she voted. She wouldn't behave the way she behaved. Just look at her laughing about smoking um, marijuana and hanging out. And yet she threw African-American males into jail. Because they were doing that. Yeah. Right. And so she is, we're full of contradictions, but we cannot become hypocrites. And that's when you become a hypocrite. We're full of contradictions as in sometimes, you know, we're learning, mm -hmm. we're trying to figure things out. We're trying to improve. Right. Uh, and so that's, that's the biggest uh, concern I have there. But what are, what are our uh, thoughts on this? This is a very common perspective mm -hmm. on Trump. I can see why people have that perception, right? Because that, let's use Elon Musk, right? Until Elon Musk came like in favor of Trump, Trump was like hammering him. Right. <laughs> Elon, this, Elon. Now all of a sudden they're best friends. Hmm. So I can see how you can have that perception, but hmm. how do we justify our perspective? Because Mo is asking a you know a pretty fair yeah um, a fair question yeah. here. Yeah. Sure. So how do we say Kamala's fake? What's the difference between, and let's concede the point to more, let's say that Trump is fake. What's the difference between Kamala fake and Trump fake? Any thoughts on that? Um, I think that, you know, the the, the celebration that, that they do, you know, after a touchdown or after a good play, I think that's more what more Trump is, is he loves to celebrate things, celebrate his successes, celebrate how good he is, you know, and whoever it is, he's talking trash to no matter what. But his game is real. And you, if we're judging the, the, you know, if by their fruits we can know them, then just judging by his fruits from the past 50 years, who he's helped, who he's been around, and what he's done. And they talk about all his failures and bankruptcies and everything, but he kept going, which is what business people do. We may fail, but we're going to keep going. And now he's a successful person. You look at his kids, they're all successful. They're all, you know, mm. good, conservative people. So, as far as Kamala, her track record shows that she intentionally lies, mm. right, to to get uh, uh, favor, to gain favor from whoever, and there's a track record of that. So as far as being fake and whether uh, Trump, I think it's the competition thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, he'll talk trash during the debates to everybody, but eventually, once they come back, yeah, we're we're friends now. We're on the same team now. You know, as long as you're on his team, you're good. So um, that's how that's how I view it. Like Kamala mm -hmm. Harris is a liar, liar, liar. You know, lies about everything. Where Trump, yeah, he may say crazy. He's been saying crazy things everything he, ever since he got here. But the reason why I liked him when he, I first heard him speak um, in 2015 is because he sounds exactly like the people I'm around, you know, and he has a good track record. Family, business, all of that. Mm. He came and he applied everything he knows into the country. It worked. And then 
those guys came in and then now look. So the evidence is already there. So to continue to hate them, just to hate them is, uh, I think is a, is a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Masi. Now, good question. Uh, Moy, fair question. My, 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 um, my, my thoughts on, on Trump is Trump is a, he is a, he is the captain of a football team that people, if you support him, he's going to support you. I find him very loyal in a way that whoever's on his team, he's, he's going to do everything he can to help. And then when you're, when you're on his team, you're, you're, he's, it's almost like a two-way street. He's going to expect everything to, to help, help you. So obviously people who used to be on his team and then obviously have gone out and then of course they're, they're going to go after him. Trump's reaction, a typical politician would most likely ignore, but Trump is always on offense, playing offense. He's going to go after you too. So, you know, Elon Musk wasn't so friendly to Trump. So what did Trump do? He went on offense, on Elon, <laughs> right. right? On Elon Musk. And then Elon <clears throat> Musk, He's he's probably done his homework. He's like, dude, Kamala, she she is real bad news. She's like the constant line that she used to do this and she's for that, and she never did it with her action and in her voting. He he even Elon Musk, a billionaire, understood that okay, this person's not for it. And then what really kind of took Trump over the kind of like didn't make anyone question, like, this guy is a billionaire, he doesn't have to do this, but he took a shot in the head. And he's still caught up. When he says he's tough, he still caught up. He didn't care if he was going to get shot again. He still caught up to just tell his supporters because he is the, he is the captain of the team. Right. And the crowd was his teammates in a sense. You know, I'm just comparing yeah. with yeah. in a sports. Just letting them know, hey, I'm injured, but I'm not dead. I'm not done. And then he kind of went off, you know, just to keep fighting. Finish the game if he doesn't make it or whatever. You know, saying the whole fight, fight. So you can't question... Trump, when he's when he's saying that he is in it to win it, that nothing's gonna stop him, that's a perfect example and illustration just to depict Trump that he's he's not afraid. He's willing to take violence, bullet, whatever it may be. If I compare that to Kamala or Biden, if something happened like that, I can't see them. It's it's literally Secret Service or security cover them, take them immediately straight to the car and protect them and take them to the hospital. And then maybe after two weeks, then they'll come back out and say how they were attacked or whatever. But after what Trump went the next week, the very next week or day, he's already <laughs> saying, I'm going to be at the convention. I'm going to be there. You know, he, no, that's like, to me, you can't fake that. Trump is not, that's you. That to me, that's the difference. That's real. He's, he's a warrior. He, he knows he's in a position to lead a team to prosperity and Kamala hasn't shown any of that. That's why if you call Trump fake, I can understand because, you know, he's fighting other people. But, okay, that's your fake. But who's faker? Kamala is faker. It's almost like she, <laughs> she is really, we, really worse than, uh, than Trump. So that's why I go with Trump. So. Okay. Um, I think the best way for me to describe my position is the WWE, right? You have to be able to understand that the storyline is made up, right? That's acting. Right. But when a guy jumps, climbs the ladder and jumps from the top into the ring, into the, the, the ring, that's real, right? Like right. you could have the storyline and everything. Everybody knows like, oh yeah, we're acting. But that jump is legit. That guy could kill himself or hurt himself. Right. There's nothing fake about that mm. and that's what you have to understand with trump is there is that if trump wasn't a fighter like we're describing here he wouldn't survive the only reason why trump hasn't been defeated or destroyed is because of his mentality and his approach right and to me the ultimate test is this trump or kamala they're everything equal which one will you say is your friend? And if they give up what they're holding and they know if they give up something and that that will lead to your death, who would you pick in fighting for you to the very end to protect your life? I'm telling you right now, anyone who's honest to themselves would not pick Kamala. 
<laughs> would not pick Kamala, right? right. Everyone right. would say, hey, if Trump thinks I'm his friend, kind of like you were mentioning earlier, that to me is the ultimate fake test. Because if you both say you're my friend, mm-hmm. right, and you think they're both fake, well, which one's more fake? <laughs> Trump as your friend or Kamala as your friend deciding whether you live or die being <laughs> beat up by terrorists? <laughs> I don't know of a single person who says Kamala's going to protect me. Kamala's going to stick to me with the right, end. Right. No one in their right mind mm. would do that. So to me, in the ultimate litmus test, mm. it's not even close. Trump wins by a mile, in my opinion. Right. In regards to, to our discussion on you know not willing to accept the facts and it be in denial, Right and and kind of give the culpable deniability, meaning oh I can always use that backdoor excuse. Oh I didn't know, right? How these guys behave after they quote unquote fact checked JD Vance. How the how the moderators behave here is how I feel a lot of people who aren't willing to accept the truth behave. Towards Uncle Donald, in my opinion. And we'll watch it right here. For our viewers, Springfield, Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status, temporary protected status. Well, Mar- 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 but, but thank you, no, Senator. No, we have no, no, so please. much to get to. Margaret, I, I think it's important. We're going to turn out of the, the economy. Debate, thank Margaret, you. The, the, the Look at their faces. The you guys are going to fact check. And since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's Thanks, an application though. called the CBP One app where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole and be granted legal status at the wave yeah. of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our Thank you, own Senator, for leadership. describing the legal and Ka- process. And we have and so Kamala much Harris to get to, Senator. Pathway. Those we laws have, so have been much- on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. The, the, the we CBP want to have. app has not been on the books since 1990. It's something that's on the books. Yeah. The audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. We have so much we want to get to. Thank you for explaining <laughs> the legal process. Just. To- <laughs> that's how I feel people are behaving. Right. And they aren't willing. They're like the moderators. Oh, 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 I don't want to hear the church. Let's yeah, just go on to on. the next thing. We got to move right. on. Right. right. When in reality, they just don't want to hear the truth sometimes. And and that's why, for me, we're getting to the point that if you don't know, there's a high probability it's not because you're sincere. It's because you don't want to know, in my opinion. Mm. Any thoughts yeah. on that? No, I was just thinking, if she, she the moderator, she had so much to go through. Don't, don't interject then. Just say next question. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to give the last hit, last hit and uh, move on. It's just so funny. But, but, and this is another thing, Tua. This is where I think uh, it's kind of been shared around. I think Ben Carson shared it where this is a good test of the power of the mainstream media on controlling mm-hmm. the mind. If they win this election. They you know what's going to be even worse. They're going to do something even crazier because if they can convince enough people to feel like Kamala is this person when her entire political career has been very lefty voting, everything with mass immigration, letting criminals kind of get lesser penalties or kind of stay in the community. If they were able to change that person to be presidential and win, that's crazy. And if we, it is American people, you know, like Trump always say, he, he always has the faith that American people will make the right choice and fight for, fight for what is right. If, if they're able to, if we're able to win with Trump winning, that is a big um, indicator of the media still does not control the majority of minds of the American people. So it's, that's another test with this election too, because we all know the mainstream media, who their, who their person is for the president. So, yeah. No, hundred percent. Lolo, any thoughts? Um, the, th- the thing with uh, playing fair um, in politics, or I guess in anything is the fact that you can't punch the ref. You know what I mean? Because you'll automatically look like the bad guy. Um, but it's not fair. I mean, I go in thinking that it's not fair, even though sometimes I'll give credit to, you know, I gave credit to Kamal for, oh, that sounds good, you know? Mm-hmm. Or even when uh, the Obamas went up to speak at the 
a convention, I was like, dang, they sound good. They sounded good, right? Yeah. Um, like, at least let it be that. But for the mainstream media to jump in and start refereeing, right? They talk about the, the refs being on the Kansas City Chiefs side. <laughs> but really, <laughs> like, the refs are now calling the game for the other side. And they have been for a long time. And I think that's the most frustrating part is that, dang, the refs are in on it too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what I see with, you know, any of the news networks, the past new, net, uh, new ne news networks that uh, ran the debates, that's what it seemed like. It was always a three-on-one type thing and mm -hmm. the refs were on their side. So, mm. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, <clears throat> for me personally, Donald Trump has kind of changed that perspective, right? Before mm. you wouldn't dare say anything to the media, right? right? Mm. What Donald Trump has shown is guys, the ref, no, everyone says you can't swing at the ref and it's always bad for you. If you assume the ref is impartial, right? Right. right, what right. Donald Trump has come is he's like, he's like, Hey guys, I know for a fact these refs are getting paid right. and they're rigged against us. And I know you guys don't like it, but I have, in order to win, I have to fight the ref and the other team. Right. right? right. I mean, I've, I've played when I was at um, the high school I went to for football, we were told all the time, you can't just beat the other team. You have to beat the ref as well. And there's right. ways to do that. You behave in a way to take away the ref's power. And, and in this case, it is, what Donald Trump is doing is discrediting the mainstream mm. media as much as possible. And, and the American people are, are seeing that. Uh, and, and rightfully so, because if a referee is, you know, taking his orders and paycheck under the table for, for bad reasons, then they should be exposed and they should be questioned. And they, and, and the people should say, Hey, you know what, uncle Donald, I think you might be on to something, take on the ref. And, uh, it's free game, right? Mm. I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I was going to think uh, probably the number two most famous phrase that's going to live on well after Trump's days are over on this earth is fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Other than make America great, MAGA is number two most popular. It could be number one, fake news, you know? Right. Since, he, since he's coined that term, you see that everywhere with people using that when they debate online right. or whatever in uh in podcast like dude that's fake news <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that started because of trump so right. just to go on with his impact on like what you're saying Tua, like creating another like hey this is not an even match now we've got to fight from all sides and he's used the language to make it to make it possible for people to understand that hey you know the 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 media is not impartial here they're gonna right. they're gonna make give you the harder questions and then fact check you and then give the other person and then no fact check but trump saying the whole fake news and the and the media is the enemy of the state of the of the people so trump tr all these like phrases is gonna live on well after trump so it's pretty right. yeah like a, and and you know what's crazy i was not a trump fan when he first came yeah. right i had some serious doubts because as conservatives we do a really good job at picking people that in the end turn on us, whether it's Supreme yeah. Court justices or, yeah. or, you know, politicians. And I was like, oh, great. We already have a bunch of rhinos everywhere. Now we're going to bring in a guy who was a Democrat, yeah. right? A publicly. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, great. I'm, I'm not on board with this. You know, and so I, I I was more of a Ben Car. No, I was a Ted Cruz. Ted mm. Cruz was my preferred option, right? Um, but I'll tell you this: the more I just watched, this is this is really what what first opened my mind when he, when he had those bad bad media stories come out about grabbing women and mm. other things. I was like, dude, he's done. He's done. Like mm -hmm. nobody recovers from that, right? Like right. there's no, and yet he survived <laughs> and he survived. And I was like, wait a minute. This is not your typical situation here, 
right? And it reminded me of the story of um, George Washington when I read a book on George Washington. And during the French-Indian War, George Washington, they were trying to kill him so many times, right? They were trying to kill him. And then in one of the battles, and this story comes up because after the French Indian War, this one um, chief visited uh, George Washington while he was being a surveyor. Mm. So when he wasn't at war, he was he was a paid survey. He was surveying mm. things. And this old Fiji, uh, Fijian Native American um, chief wanted to meet George Washington and, and wanted to shake his hand and told him this story. Right. He goes, hey, do you remember this battle? at this time, at this place? And he goes, yeah. He's like, we had tried to kill you like four or five times before in different battles. And we finally got this one in Tiakula guy that was a sharpshooter. Like this guy was like, he never mm. misses, right? Mm. And so the, the whole point was have the main, have a battle so that they could have George Washington come through. And the whole point was just to kill him. It was just to shoot him. So they were hiding. They weren't even in the battle. They were hiding and they picked the spot so that they could kill him. Um, the Intiakula guy. So it's him, the chief, and a couple French guys. The, 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 the sharpshooter lines up George Washington, shoots, right? Mm. And the, the shooter goes, looks at his gun, takes out his gun, cleans it, checks a couple things, lines up again shoots and then and then the french guy's like why can't you hit him and the intiakula guy the sharpshooter packs up his uh his gun and walks away and they're like what are you doing why are you walking away and the guy goes that guy shouldn't be alive both shots should have killed him and he go and because he's native american right he's like the great spirits protecting that guy <laughs> it doesn't matter what we do we need to walk away because this guy, there's something going on besides mm. the normal circumstances, right? Mm. So when I saw it like once, you're kind of like, oh, dude, yeah. he got lucky. I don't know how he survived that. Then it was like twice and then the third time. And then I was like, you know what? This, this, is, this, is, not, this is not normal, normal. right? Yeah. This is right. something more than just blah, blah, blah. And then I saw some interesting videos that made some claims, and I was like, you know what? Does does the idea of someone like quote unquote Trump? Is there any evidence for this in the scriptures? And then you go back to the Old Testament when God calls um, the Babylonian king or the Assyrian king yeah. Cyrus, yeah. and he and God says, "I will call my servant." blah, 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 and he will execute my work and no one will be able to stop him, right? Because he uh, frees the Jews, right? Because he, he Yes, actually, you know, he comes and conquers, destroys everything, and then he eventually releases the Jews the to Jews. go and, and do his work. And in my mind, and this guy was not a nice guy, yeah. right? He would cut people's heads, he would torture people, and he <laughs> would uh, put them, like, intimidate people, right, in battle. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what? Some There's something to this guy. So I was a little bit more hopeful. I wouldn't say I was all bought in, right? I was like, okay. Yeah. But once he got into office, I watched his behavior. And I'm like, and I even, I even for me personally, whether I made it up in my mind or not, I saw a change in his behavior when he got into office. Because I think he realized, holy smokes, I'm the only one who can fight for the American people. Right. Just like I felt like I saw a change after he got shot in the ear. Mm. Like homeboy, I think, was like, holy crap, the only reason why I'm alive is because someone interfered, because he should not be alive. Anyways, that's my long story to say I wasn't a Trump fan, mm. but observing and seeing what's happening, I'm like, dude, I can't I can't deny what I'm seeing. Like this shouldn't be happening. So right mm. now I'm a pretty good uh Trump fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right I was just thinking while you were telling that story as far as uh, Samuel the Lamanite, right? Oh, yeah, the arrows, if, yeah. Right, right. If if this Indian guy, you know how we pass down stories from generation to generation, mm. if that was a story that became a myth and a legend, 
that yeah, if it's if the the arrows miss, then the great spirit's protecting them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you were telling that story about the Indian, I was like, huh, I wonder if that story passed all the way down to this. You know this. Yeah. Indian. Well, and I think I think it's a healthy respect to understand. There's our limitations of flesh, right, in the physical world, right? Like if you really believe in science, in my opinion, you cannot doubt God. In my opinion, because if you understand how the physical world behaves and then you see what's happened in the physical world, you're like something more happened. My example is this. You would never be walking in the Amazon and found an iPhone and then say, oh, the rocks just smashed into each other for a million years and created an iPhone. <laughs> like, anybody who would tell me that story, you would hear that and be like. Yeah, that, 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 that's just stupid. That's how I feel about how people describe how life came to be. Well, the elements just kept smashing in each other. And then all of a sudden, a little thing came out. And then a bigger <laughs> thing came out. And then here and we then are. I'm like, Shanna, do you really believe that? Just go smash some rocks and see if you'll get the Empire State Building. Like, do you really, do you really believe that? Like, do you understand just simply that that is, in theory, doesn't make sense? In my opinion. Now, granted, there's a lot of other smarter people who, who think the other way, but I'm just like, dude, you don't smash rocks for a million years and then all of a sudden get an iPhone. <laughs> no, also, to a, to a, it just made me go back to um, there's a common thing that's kind of going out there when they say, you know, the whole ocean and the get it, and they create the genealogy. It's like, <laughs> come on. We didn't come from freaking seaweed mixed with s soil from the land that's kind of drifting on the ocean and then creates land and then the land creates human being. Like, come on. That's, <laughs> that's what happens. That's what happens when you don't go to church for a while. You start having <laughs> all these theories, man. No, I'm just like, it's crazy. And like, people are like, and people are like, oh, this is the, the genealogy of when, how Tonga became to be. And people are like, come on, nah. Uh, maybe from your village, but not maybe, mine. <laughs> maybe your village. Maybe your maybe your guy uh, told you that story or whatever. Like, oh, but I, I, I don't know. That's just that's just my. When you were explaining that door with the things don't make sense, we hit rocks together. It's like, nah, nah, man. Yeah, I still yeah, hear people talk about uh, Maui Fus for Nua, right? And then uh, I would ask them, what 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 did that guy do? And they would say the same thing. Oh yeah, he's the one that you know the fish hook and you know pull the island up out of the ocean and i was like all right now think about that like, <laughs> is that really freaking possible he's like nah dude it's in our it's in our history it's in our I, was like, I know i know it is but just think about it real quick how does you know the 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 islands get there and you're right but you know something well see and that's the thing believing. to me it's a lack of two things understanding of reality and recognizing your own environment, right? When we go watch Avengers, we don't sit there and say, that really happened, <laughs> right? We don't sit there and say, oh my gosh, Thanos could snap his fingers and we could all die. Like that's that's an existential threat to our existence, right? Instead, someone who's honest to themselves or understands reality and understands life can sit back and say, that story is a representation of a reality, but what is that reality, right? That reality is dictators and communism leads to people mm -hmm. getting killed. Mm -hmm. Like th th there's always a thread of reality, just like those stories of, of like Maui Fusfornua. It's like there literally could have been a Maui Fusfornua, but he wasn't around causing tectonic activity. <laughs> he, you know what I mean? There right. are more reasonable ways to be like, Oh, our ancestors really believed in that, and that's how we really happened. It's like, no, you can sit back and say, Hey, you know, there's there's probably a reason why they believe that. Right. And we can we can look at other pieces of data and be like, Oh, there's Maui Fusfonu, and there's a giant stone structure in Tonga I called Hamonga Maui. I understand and stuff from that like that. time. From that time, you know, wherever this story came from, I understand from that time they didn't know. And it had to be a, a, a great story of a god 
that sounds, you know, because they couldn't have known or proved it. So I understand from that time. But now it's like, all right, um, can we, you know, can we get over this uh, already or what? You know what I mean? So. Oh, yeah. Way. No, 100%. Guys, I have not been paying attention and we are flooded with comments. I try to stay. I, I am well behind. I will try and do a better job moving forward. But it's big. This kind of comment is the one that caught my eye. What the heck is going on in California? What a bitch. <laughs> I don't know what kind of Taco Bell you're eating, but when you eat Taco Bell, there you don't need to pull anything out. It shoots out. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of Taco Bell you're eating there, uh, Water Bears. <laughs> See, see, this is what happens when you make those kind of comments, Water Bears. The legend is going to begin. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hey, here's um, we're looking on time here. Here's another interesting video I found, and we'll listen into it. And this goes back to, and, and, and this is because of the times that we're in, and like we're talking about in the politics. There's propaganda going everywhere. Traditional channels of information are, for the the, the best way to say it, is unreliable right now. Right. Um, it, we really have to change the way we view the world, the way we think, how we judge information, and and wh- how we we perceive the world. And I think this is a, at least for me, this was an interesting video um, that brings in new information that ch- totally changes how I perceived what I knew, I thought we knew about South Africa. Um, let me take it off of mute and uh, press play here. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong screen. Black people are not the original inhabitants of South Africa, which, in fact, they're realizing that now. When they claim that they owned all the land, uh, the original inhabitants, of who they're not many left, said, excuse me, no, we were the original inhabitants. You guys were migrants here as well, which they were. Okay, the original inhabitants of, of Southern Africa are called the Khoisan. Um, in the West, like some, the Bushmen are Khoisan. Hottentots are Khoisan. But you can't use those words anymore. You know, I just call them Khoisan. Okay. All right. Now, and they were the inhabitants of the whole of Southern Africa. So the whole of South Africa at one stage were Khoisan. The black people originated in a, where what is now Cameroon. That's where they hold on. Khoisan aren't black. No. What are they? They're a se- completely separate ethnicity all on their own. In fact, if you look at them, they kind of yellowy. They, mm-hmm. They're a, they're a light brown yellow color, right. but more they look more Asian than African. They they do not consider themselves African. Interesting. When, when the white guys arrive in Cape Town, so 1652 is when Dutch guys arrived there. At that stage, you could have divided South Africa almost exactly 55th, what's now South Africa. The, the western half of the country was entirely Khoisan. There were no black people there. None at all. Only, only Khoisan. So we Cape Towners, all that area, Khoisan people. The northern part of the country did have black people. They'd started arriving and they were still migrating. How long have they been there in the northern well, it's a it's a moot point, and people have debated it. It would it would seem that that black people had probably started arriving in the northern parts of South Africa, maybe a thousand years, something like that, about a thousand years before whites got there, right up in the north. Okay, and they've been slowly moving south because it's an empty space. I mean, one of the things about Africa is it's very empty. Up until the 1950s, Africa was very empty. It's the population exploded because white colonists, the naughty white colonists put hospitals there, and there's been this huge population explosion since the 1950s. But Africa was really very empty up until then. And so pe- tribes moved around and just occupied new empty territory. So the guys coming down from the north, who called the Bantus, it's called the Bantu expansions when black people came out of the Cameroons. They'd been occupying South Africa and moving systematically south, down, down the east coast. They were pastoralists tomorrow. Yeah, they were pastoralists, yeah. Whereas the Khoisan were hunter-gatherers. They were like aboriginals, okay? Mm-hmm. So they, they hadn't become pastoralists yet. The black guys are migrating down from the north and settling, doing exactly what white guys are doing. So white guys, the Dutch guys from Cape Town, were, were settling by moving westwards, eastwards, eastwards. So the white guys are moving from Cape Town eastwards and the black guys are moving down from the north. And they met 
at a place called the Fish River, which is now in the, in, in the middle of South Africa at a place called, it's still called border. Everybody in South Africa calls that part of the country the border, even though there's no border there at all anymore. Mm. But it was a river called the Fish River, which is where blacks and whites first encountered each other. Mm. And then it started 100 years of warfare between whites and and the Kosa, who were the, 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 the tribe that they met there. So, okay, so at, at that point, that would have been in the last 1700. So whites and blacks first encountered each other in 1700. Mm-hmm. Okay? So whites had already been there for 100 years at that point. So, Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know how accurate it is, right? Mm. It could be accurate, it could be not, but that's that's not the point for me. The point here is new information changes everything, right? And that there is an important way to look at things and 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 having a proper perspective, being willing to at least consider a different idea, consider a different perspective, um, because it, it changes the way you view. Like, for example, how do we know that someone is the original or a group of people are the original people on a piece of land we can't right we, we we literally just can't because we don't know who owned it who owned it before them like this Khoisan people right yeah he's talking about like oh a thousand years ago the more we're looking at human history i just saw this um maybe a few months ago just up the street here in texas they found a foot a human footprint on top of a dinosaur footprint, right? Mm. And people are like, what the heck's going on here? Right? Because the whole theory is dinosaurs and humans were like, yes. And what I'm getting to is, let's say, and they're saying millions of years, let's not even go to millions of years. Let's just go 50,000 years. Who knows? This he's only talking about a couple thousand years. Who who are the people before the Khoisan? There could have been civilizations that have lived and died many times over before that. I mean, we were having conversations about there's a possibility that the Ha'amon has been there for 50,000 years. Hmm. Right? Just with the weathering yeah. on the limestone yeah. and we're looking in the Americas, we're looking in the world like the 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 way human history is, we have no idea what what really is reality and we have to be open to the fact that our perception of reality could be wrong and we have to figure out how we navigate that that's that's the reason why i bring that up is that's how i feel the political landscape is today not just in the united states the united states is kind of high profile but i think you've seen it in your neck of the woods mussy in new zealand right mm-hmm similar things the landscape is kind of crazy but in order to hopefully make the best decision we can we have to be open to as many ideas as possible any any thoughts on that or the video itself yeah no i what's i, I do have a question i thought zulu occupied that south african terrier like where where is he at because okay zulu I'll, I'll ask uh our buddy grok here yeah because um that was my understanding that the zoo and i'm thinking zulu is black ethnic um background so i was like i thought i thought he was there and he's had some fights with some of the 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 westerners so i was yeah i was really surprised with that information that guy uh i shared because my thoughts were zulu was like the king of the region of that area but uh but yeah that, that's my question on that just regarding that video Any thoughts? Uh, oh, here, let me pull this up. Let me share this real quick. So it looks like, oh, looks like I uh, deleted it. Great tour. Uh, it looks like I think he mentioned that the black, the white, the guy mentioned this, um, where he mentioned like the Bantu coming up from the north, the north. and coming down. So he says. Uh, the Zulu are Bantu ethnic group of Southern Africa and the largest ethnic group in South Africa with an estimated 10 to 12 million. Uh, historically, the Zulu kingdom was a powerful state in Southern Africa. See, yeah, 17 to 1800s. Mm. Around so the that, same time frame. And, He's, then, and, and this and, guy was talking before that. 
Yes. He said, yeah, he said 1700. That's probably that the first interaction with whites and black. So that's so that Zulu must have been from the northern. His, ter mm -hmm. his territory didn't reach all the way to that southern part of Cape Town and to the end of South Africa that we know today, but it was that northern side of Africa. That must be his his people. So that's interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here, here, here's here's where he was saying, I guess, a little, hey, look, we're mainstream media, some fact-checking. Um, yeah. <laughs> says that the Khoisan mm. are considered among the first inhabitants of Southern Africa with genetic archaeological evidence suggesting their ancestors might have been in the region for over 150,000 years. Mm. Possibly earlier. Mm. Interesting. So, yeah, see here, the genetic, see, they don't say that they're of African descent. They just say that um, show a degree of genetic diversity indicating they might have been one of the largest human populations for much of human history before other populations expanded. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Ah. Yeah. No, that's that's pretty cool information. That's all I had. I was like, okay, it makes sense. So that's Zulu from Cameroon all the way down to that mm -hmm. northern part of South Africa today before they start coming south and then south. They met. And I didn't I didn't realize that the Palangis um were there in the 1600s. That's pr that's pretty that's pretty early and long so I can I can see their claim to there because it was open space cuz they're 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 probably they're more directly interaction was having more with that was it the Koshan Koshan people Koisan Koisan which yeah. were not part of the black ancestry. And that's okay. one of the challenges of the reparation slash victim mentality, right? Mm. Because mm. there's always someone there before you and before, where, where do we stop? At some point, we all got to just say, we look to the future. Right. Mm. 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 Any more mm. thoughts or comments on that? And then I think we'll do like one more, two more videos before we, uh, do some uh, closing thoughts. Closing? No, I'm good with. Uh, no, it's learn something new. Learn something new. With that one, I'm good with that video. I think that's why it's important. Uh, the record keeping thing throughout history, as far as the Bible being a, uh, if we don't look at it as a scripture, we look at it as a record of history, historical right? book. Yeah. yeah, I think that was. I mean, that was so key. Um. For anybody not to veer off of the the information, um, the true information, because when I thought about um, these places, and you know, I've heard that uh, Polys are from uh, the Lapita people, or you know, they found DNA in Africa, or DNA in uh, Mesopotamia, or Southeast Asia, or the Middle East. Um, then you have this book, right? Uh, that basically tells us that uh, we actually are from here from we migrated from the Americas but before then they came from the Middle East and those guys came <laughs> from Southeast Asia and those guys were enslaved in North Africa so it's like oh so we could have been there at some point in time we just don't come directly <laughs> from there right yeah okay I, I get that I, I can I can go I can you know I can <laughs> rock with that you found our DNA everywhere but don't tell us our story oh this is where you're from this is where you're from this is where well, if you found our DNA there, don't tell our story. Let us try to figure it out. We'll we'll, we'll let you mm -hmm. know what it is, right? Well, we <laughs> yeah. I just so, want to yeah. warn you, though, Lolo, that at the end of the day, if you go deep enough, you'll find out that you're just uh, seaweed and uh, settlement <laughs> dust yeah. in yeah. the lagoon. I, I just want to warn you. That's where Mussy <laughs> Mussy's great 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 grandfather was a floating seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm always fine when you reaki lotu my stuff. There's mm. some days I don't want to go, but this is reaki lotu at Taula. No, Ogu Kehe, I reaki lotu, muy 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 hete volo. Okay, uh, uh, there's a big uh, gap. There's a big uh, gap. I like, you know? I like how you di differentiate. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to. Kordiaki <laughs> Lotu, yeah, it's like we all Riaki Lotu every once in a while. Uh, Those who are like, hey, go fair, Lucifer, go fair, ma'o, get ma'o, go for today. 
That's a different. That's a different yeah. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want. I'm, I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and find this. Uh, this video real quick. Um, let me see here. But yeah, any 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 other thoughts? Well, I uh, just kind of looked this up real quick for our last video. Mm, nah, nah, it's no. I think uh, Lolo brought a good point. I mean, you know, we could come from here, but you know, I believe we come from the, the Americas. But like, people from the Americas can could have come from the the Middle East, you know, area, and like it could, you know, it's it's just very interesting, and that's why you just when you do your DNA check. You could be a, somebody who's full Caucasian, then you still have some ancestry that to Africa, you yeah. know, that can be so like, it's it, it, yeah. To find our origin, that's just a data point, but you you're gonna you're gonna have to really dig in to figure out exactly the the origin right. of your people. So, nah, the, the good points, good points. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just waiting for the commercial to play through in the background here, because. Yeah. There's two videos I want to share to close us out. Um, and as always, there's always, you know, I'm pretty sure it's Inkleese Fleas creating another account trying to talk about Tui Manua. Um, <laughs> hey, we, we have to admire, we have to admire his um, diligence. His, uh, yes, his diligence and his perseverance. Hey, you got to do it. You have an idea you want to get out there, even though we've addressed it a thousand times, <laughs> killing the dead horse, but still. Mm, those eight. are the those are the Kumala voters, right? Now. <laughs> people like people like people yeah. like please, you no matter how many times you say, don't touch this, don't touch that because of this, because of that, and the reason yeah. being, and they still do it. It's like, dude, they don't they, care. Uh, they don't care. It, it is what it is. That's the okay. Kumala people. Yes, hundred percent. So, I'm gonna show this video, and then we have a a backup video to it. But this is, you know, you guys will recognize the play, and then I want to prep it, and then we're gonna last see the last one to, to kind of break it down for us and close out the show for today. He's got Bolden and Fitzgerald to the left. He's got Preston to the right. Eighteen seconds. Oh, they can pick down here from the gun Steelers show blitz here they come he gets it away and it's picked off Ooh. at the goal line there's a flag thrown on the run back james harrison to run it back and harrison is past midfield harrison going down the sideline harrison <laughs> still on his feet harrison is going to go all the way and waiting for the official to get there touchdown is signal a flag is down on the run back back at the nine yard line Rushing the passer. That's my guess as far as watching football. <laughs> or cut block. Personal foul. Personal foul. Grasp the face mask. Offense number 74. The foul occurred during the last time down. The touchdown counts. Unbelievable. Harrison completely gassed the call is so we're gonna we're gonna watch a follow-up video on Harrison, right? Mm. So this is what everybody looks at and remembers, and like man, Harrison's the man, what a great life. You know what I mean? He's it's like looking at the billionaire and be like, Wow, easy life, blah blah blah, right? Mm. We we can we all see the bright lights and the the, mm. the cool stuff, but we don't we don't always see the reality. And here's a quick snippet on reality, right? And before you even get to this, there's a lot of bumpy roads. There's a lot of issues. There's a lot of despair. A lot of challenges. Um, and I just want to kind of show that that difference in um, in this. So we'll watch this part here. Free agent quickly made an impression in Steelers camp. Well, he had a nickname right off the bat, and his first nickname with the Steelers was Two Day Vet. I don't even know why they gave me that. Why they said they gave me that? Because that's kind of how he approached it. He rolled in there like 
a veteran and he'd only been there for like two days. But I remember him going up to someone on the machine, a veteran, and being like, get off my machine. Brett lying. You know, Brett go exactly. <laughs> two day bet. Always has something quick to say back to the coaches. Like it was a day of practice. He intercepted the ball and Tim Lewis was like, run to the end zone. He was like, oh, is that what I'm supposed to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> so we guilting everybody. We laughing like this guy gonna get cut. That <laughs> attitude that they were getting, that was more of a defense mechanism because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So instead of it being like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> let's go right there. Perimeter play action. Let's go. Let's go. My first OTAs, the play starts and I go freeze brain dead. I throw my hands up. I'm like, hey, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Get me out of here. Like, in the middle of the play. And just stop. Well, don't stop. If in the middle of a play, you can't just stop because you made a mistake. You shouldn't be making those mistakes. Let's go. Then he would take himself out. Where are you going? I don't know. My, I don't know what I'm doing yet. You can't just take yourself out <laughs> of a game. Back in the huddle. Back in the huddle. Let's go. Get the snap. And the way he responded earlier, just quitting on things, kind of just like, I don't think this guy's ever going to get it. <laughs> Harrison was among the final cuts and spent the 2002 season on the practice squad. In 2003, he returned to Steelers camp, but was cut twice in three weeks. Near the end of the 2003 season, he was signed by the Baltimore Ravens. Number 53, James Harrison. And sent to play for the Rhine Fire in NFL Europe. The Ravens brought him to camp in 2004, but released him after just a few days. In three attempts to make an NFL roster, James Harrison had been cut a total of four times. <laughs> so I just sat around that whole off season and I was like, if I don't get, you know, picked up, you know, after this, then it's just not meant to be and in the car. So I'm no cool with it. Just get a regular job like everybody else, you know, put in your 40, 50, 60 hours a week, whatever it is, get your paycheck and, you know, keep it moving. But the long shot free agent quickly made an impression. Any thoughts? That's I wanted to show that mm. that contrast, right? Super Bowl glory. Everybody sees this guy as a safe staple starter, always a legend. And then when you hear the background, wasn't always so shiny. But uh, mm. any any thoughts on that? No, I did hear some stories that he was like cut a couple times, but I didn't know that he was actually picked up by the Ravens and the Ravens kind of gave him a shot, got cut from there. And then was he, was that Canadian league? He was, he was. No, uh, it's a uh, European NFL. Oh, European NFL. I didn't know that was, is that still going on now? No, no, it's dead. It's dead. That's why I'm not, we've had this debate with talking with Lee. I'm not. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm not, that's right. I'm not just because we sold tickets for one game every year in Germany in two seconds. That doesn't mean you can set up a whole league over there mm, mm. Um, because they've tried that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, no, yeah. no. I mean, that's that's. Uh, I think you know, just like everything, you can have all the skills, but sometimes you need a little need a little luck here and there. A luck. Mostly happens to people who actually keep trying, keep trying, and put the best effort uh, forward and try to do what's right. So usually luck usually falls your way most of the time. But yeah, hey, uh, good good on uh, Harrison, man. I remember watching him. He, he was a killer, man. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> any any thoughts, Lolo? Any thoughts on the videos? Um, yeah, I don't know who that is, but. Uh... I bet he's a Trump guy. You know, he's just somebody that understands <laughs> that fail, 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 keep going until you make it. You know, what I mean, that's the, mm. the the main thing is win. You don't mm. you love winning, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, I, he's, a, lot, a lot of stories are like that, right? A lot of uh, mm. you know, go going through it, and that's all. Maybe that's all they know. Because he was saying, if not, I'll just go work 40, 50 hours. So he's talking <laughs> about getting a regular job. So some of them is like. Well, I'm I'm at the end. This is the end right here. It's either make it or don't. And there's a last chance. So um, I'm glad he I'm glad he made it in there. The last last chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really interesting, especially kind of his his mentality. I've seen other videos 
when he was like super popular and they always portrayed him as like super hard working you know what i mean always working hard always you know in the gym which is true right you have to do that but uh, there were two things that i thought they're interesting i don't care how successful or not successful you are you can't blame yourself for your total failure or for your total success right I, i'm a big but like like even him right he was like, well, I was about to give up anyway, right? But then <laughs> he had pushed at least long enough that it paid off for him. And really what I'm getting to is this, and I've been, I've really been thinking about this lately where, you know, sometimes we get carried away like, oh man, I got to make the perfect choice. I got to make the right choice. You know what I mean? I, if I'm, should I be on the left side of the street or the right side of the street? Because I got to make sure I get this right. Right. And, and to me, when you look at people's lives and you look at your life, the truth is, man, control is an illusion. Right. Mm. We can't even we can't even guarantee we'll be alive two hours from now. <laughs> and yet we think we can plan a business or or a or a pro bowl team or a, a super bowl team these things are in many ways we have no control over we can do some things to increase our probabilities but what i'm getting to this at the end of the day everyone has two feet everyone has you know two hands we all have a brain we are all equal we're not the same but we're all equal and we're subject to life and in my my humble opinion Try hard, do your best, and the rest is out of your control. Mm. And I, I believe in God, right? I believe you, you do your best and you leave it up to God. And if you are doing what you should be doing, God will take care of the rest. And whatever that will be is what it is. Kind of like him, right? He's like, dude, I've given everything. You know, somebody will come to you and say, hey, you want a million dollars? My mm. immediate response is, "What's at what cost? Or a, what's the alternative, right? And when we look at politics, I'm looking at Kamala Harris and I say, what's the cost to me if Kamala Harris is president? <laughs> I, okay, I try to understand that. And then I look at Donald Trump being president and what's the cost to me? And I'm way more comfortable with the Donald Trump cost. If, if I do the worst case scenario of Donald Trump, were versus the worst case scenario of Kamala, me personally, I'm I'm picking Donald Trump in my in my opinion. That's what I'm looking at. I'm I'm looking at groceries. I got you know kids. I'm looking at the cost of uh, money, right? How much it costs. The interest rates are skyrocketing. I'm looking at wars around the world. I'm looking at chaos. I look at everything and I'm like. How would I not pick Donald Trump? Which is why it's a struggle for me to really kind of try and sympathize or empathize with someone who's voting for Kamala. It's a challenge <laughs> for me, to be honest, because mm. I've always tried to give benefit of the doubt. But for this one, I'm just like, I'm really struggling. And mm. yeah, th those are some thoughts there. Um, we'll go with closing thoughts. Masi, and, Rolo, yeah. and then we'll close out for the day. I have a I have a a quick question, Tua. Like, what are your thoughts on like? They're good attending people to church and they do their thing, but they they vote like this is the LDS saying, but they're voting Kamala. Like, how do you what? How do you like explain that? Like, make that make sense to me, Tua. Like, I'm struggling make, with that. May, yeah, how do you make sense? Like, it's. I don't know. You get somebody who, you know, you, you see they're doing their what they're supposed to do with the whole church stuff and, you know, it looks like they're they're okay and stuff, but they vote. They're saying th with their intention they're, they're going to vote Kamala and you're like, okay, that's off. I mean, to me, just, I just, I don't know if you can explain like, what's the what's the rationale for them to don't vote Trump but vote Kamala? They're just listening to the. They're just. They're just easily followers of, like they they perceive that mainstream is the legitimate source for information, and they think that what they're doing is with good intentions. And Trump is 
with bad intentions and Kamala's true intentions sound much better and they give it the benefit. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Just help me make sense. With I that. mean, I that's that's a very <laughs> I struggle with that same question as well. Mm. Right. And there's a couple things that come to mind. You're overly blessed. Right. Where. Because one would say to them, forget about politics, right? Just look at your life. Mm. I notice a lot of people who have financial stability, mm. inflation's not really hurting them. Mm. Right? Mm. You look at quote unquote immigration and the crime, they're in neighborhoods that are not really gated. impacted. Gated, gated community or something. Exactly. Or high up in the mountains that, yeah. Yeah. The, the, honestly, that's the best benefit of the doubt I can give because if I take away temporal the 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 temporal blessings that they have, if I remove it from them, all of a sudden those people all of a sudden just wake up real quick. And you know how I know that's true, Masi? Yeah, what? Martha's Vineyard and the illegals that were sent there. Ah, okay. Right? They yeah. were pro-immigration, open everything. But the moment that a bunch of illegals from Florida were sent there, it was heck no. This is why this is why I don't believe that they really believe what they say, right? Because mm -hmm. if someone really believed it, when they were sent over, they would say, you know what? We said we wanted them. We're going to welcome them with, with open arms. So to me, the best benefit of the doubt I can give is you are so temporally blessed and, and disconnected from some of the challenges of the world. The best benefit of the doubt is <laughs> mm. Mahalo, it's time for a little reminder. But that's the only thing I can think of, Masi, because doctrinally, you know, reality check for a middle class person across the board. That's the best benefit of the doubt. The other one is you just don't want to know the truth. And I'm that's why I'm saying that's the best mm. benefit of the doubt I can give personally. It, it, it get caught up. It's you know, get caught up with the whole, you know, thinking just doing whatever they're in their phase of doing their spiritual callings or whatever. And it's just I don't know, it's it's a bit weird, a little bit out of reality, a little bit, maybe. They just don't they don't think it's you know important. what it, you know what it sounds like it sounds like the Kurisi reaction. They are the ones, the LDS that vote Democrat, I feel like they feel like they're the ones in the Sotehinas. Yes. And everybody mm. else is Sotelanke. You guys go out and watch us dance. We're the, you know, they're, they're almost blinded by self-righteousness so yeah. bad that they'll, you know, age See? and then play sex on the beach. Yes. You know so. Yeah. Mm. It's the Zoramites, right? Mm. You had the, the poor people build the synagogue, and then once they got what they wanted from the poor people, they said, get out of the city, mm. right? And we're going to go pray in the synagogue. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna benefit from the sacrifices that you made. It's, 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 that's why I said the best you can give, from my opinion, is you are so blessed that you're disconnected from reality. That's, th and that's being nice, in my opinion, because the reality is you are still in denial, right? Because there's, you, can, you can see things and you can hear other people suffering and observe and at least ask yourself, oh, if all of those people that are at the border were brought into my community living next to me, would I be happy with that? Mm. Mm. You know, I don't know. That, that's, no. yeah, but I agree yeah. 100% with what Lolo said. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. Oh, go ahead, Lolo. You know what you were saying, Musi was saying earlier. Um, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. Oh no, that, that, nah. that was just part. That, that was just part of my uh, just closing remarks because I was like, dude, just make it make sense. I don't get it, but I think you're right. It does take like people. They don't want to look for truth because it. I I do find they're a little bit out of touch with reality. They just oh, I just go do my job and whatever it is. But church is the whole thing, and just do that and. They don't know that, dude. It's almost, and I, I kind of, I remember talking about at church that the only reason why we come to church is because the we have we have freedoms to have free, freedom to worship. Once with that freedom to worship that is taken away, there's no really church. 
Like, I don't, there's really, there, there's really nothing you can do to have an organized assembly uh, we can congregate all the time. So that's why it's, I find, and the, the, there are men, and there's quite a few many of those people who are in this, this, this reality that it's like, it's so, it's almost like a fake, fake one too. I don't know. You know what I kind of mentioned with Hokama? Oh, it's not, it's like, they don't understand that literally your freedom is like, is a really thin line. And if you don't, if you don't, if you do not support people who are like just for basic freedoms, like Trump is for basic freedom, it's not having more government to kind of tell you what to do. That is like, dude, you're a bit just you're you you don't you don't really understand. I, that's why I was just asking that question, uh, just regarding that. But, um, but yeah, that's that's just very interesting, and um, you know, uh, it's getting close three what three and a half weeks left, yeah. and then we'll. We'll find out and, um, you know, looking forward to it. And uh, thank you, Dua, for the platform. Thank you, Lolo, for oh, I remember us. what I was going to say. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Matthew was talking about how it's okay to be rich and wealthy as long as you don't forget God, right? And we know from the scriptures, the, the promises made to, to Lehi and them was uh, this, you inherit this property you inherit as long as you're righteous. No matter how prosperous you get, how rich you get, as long as you're righteous, it's, it's all yours, right? And as soon as they forget God, that's what happens, right? Mm -hmm. so the, it starts to sneak in and seep in evil and perversions and perversions of all kinds. And um, the, 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 the strong or the righteous get weaker and weaker. And then eventually um, what you have is the remnants of what was once a great nation that the Palangis come and discover the leftover uh, mm -hmm. people that were already here. But they don't know that this, this leftovers or wherever the, the Native Americans or Indians came from a great nation. That was righteous, and if we're not careful, well, it'll just all just run back, and then it'll turn yeah. right back into that. Yeah, okay. this is not a new show, not a new right. movie. This is yeah. a one that's been seen before. Any closing thoughts, uh, Lolo? Um, no, uh, thanks. It was a, a great, uh, great discussion, and thanks for having me. Hopefully, do it again. Yes, sir. Hopefully, yes. November fifth or shortly after. Hopefully, we're having one. Uh, a positive one right. right i mean at the end of the day if you know i'm preparing myself in a couple different ways in case you know things don't roll the way i would like and the cookie doesn't crumble how i prefer right i'm getting prepared because i really believe what i believe right i really believe if kumala wins there's there's going to be negative consequences and i'm i'm trying to gear myself up to get ready for that right and I'm really hoping that uh, Uncle Donald wins. Mm. But I also know God is God. And mm. he's the only one that can guarantee anything. Mm. And uh, I'm trying to prepare myself in the case that uh, Auntie Kumala uh, wins because stranger things have happened. I mean, I thought 2020 was absolutely strange, right? right. Like that, that don't seem right. It didn't look right. It don't feel right. So I'm saying that ain't right. Um, so we've seen strange things happen before. Um, want to thank all the, the viewers and the listeners. I will do a better job on staying on track with the comments. Love seeing the activity. I missed a ton of comments today. I'll, I'll try and do better in the future. Um, we, we do get a lot of messages on a schedule for the digital, uh, Kava sessions, unfortunately, because it's the night gig and, uh, the bills uh, don't get really covered with this. Uh, it's kind of whenever we're able to do so, but uh, we are working on a couple of uh, interviews, recordings to release, and really thank uh, the viewers for suggestions. Right, Masi? Yeah. I think yeah. one of the ones that we're working to lock down is we yeah. kept seeing a, a specific name popping up yeah. to for interviews. We were So we're working on that. And as always... You know, every like, share, comment does go a long way. And our our philosophy, as always, stay curious, ask the hard questions, and be bold. And until next time, mahalo, and see you later. Peace. Peace.